New York's AG is closing in on Donald Trump. That is literally true. But I, before I give you the details in this story, I really want to just give you the heads up, as I have many times before. Please do not invest too much of your spirit into the idea that there will ever be legal or financial consequences for Donald Trump and his family for any of the many obvious blatant crimes that they have committed. That is not the way that America is set up. It's not impossible. And I'm glad that people are doing the work they're supposed to be doing. AG here is doing serious work, but this is America. He's wealthy and politically connected. That's a pretty good shield against consequences. In any event, let's go to the updates. The New York Attorney General's office said last night that um, told a court that its investigators have uncovered evidence that former President Donald Trump's company used quote fraudulent or misleading asset valuations to get loans and tax benefits. That look, bear in mind, this is terminology that regular people don't often have to use and trying to figure out exactly what it means is necessarily easy for people with relatively simplistic investments and all that. But this is effectively the same genre of criminality that we've had many reasons to believe for a very long time is true. I mean, this is what Cohen was talking about in his testimony like three years ago. AOC had some great questioning exactly in this area, which is gaming the system by on the one hand overestimating how much things are worth generally to secure loans. And then on the other hand, underestimating for tax purposes and all sorts of things like that. It's a fun game. Uh, that they play. Okay, so so this is sort of the, the 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 basic idea of crime that we've had a lot of reason to believe that the Trump Organization has historically engaged in. Now we don't know exactly what's going to happen in terms of next steps for this, um, but we do want to give you more details about what it is that led the AG to believe that this sort of criminal uh, behavior had been going on. So apparently they used personal financial statements ranging from all the way back to 2004 to 2020 that have been filed by Trump's accounting firm Mazars. The Attorney General's office said the Trump Organization overstated the value of land donations made in New York and California on paperwork submitted to the IRS to justify several million dollars in tax deductions. Okay, so there's a lot of examples of this. They're interesting, let's jump into it. They list his Seven Springs estate north of New York City as being worth $291 million. That's according to the company, based on the dubious assumption that it could reap $161 million from building nine luxury homes. That certainly seems optimistic. They added a brand premium of 15% to 30% to the value of some properties because they carried the Trump name, despite financial statements explicitly stating they didn't incorporate brand value. So best case scenario, they're just horrible at doing this sort of thing. Um, worst case scenario for them legally is that they lied and they lied to the tune of 15 to 30% to reap benefits from it. They inflated the value of a suburban New York golf club by millions of dollars by counting fees for memberships that weren't sold or were never paid. That's eh, just millions of dollars. They valued a Park Avenue condominium tower at $350 million based on proceeds it could reap from unsold units, even though many of those apartments were likely to sell for less because they were covered by rent stabilization laws. And these are like, like it's the intersection of these sorts of regulations that allow them to try to game the system. Not because it means that what they're doing is justified in terms of accounting or legally, but it provides difficulty. Now you have to adjudicate this and they can drag out that process legally for potentially years. We're sort of in the middle of that. We might be looking forward to years of that going off into the future. Really fast, a few more examples. They valued an apartment being rented to Ivanka Trump as high as $25 million, even though she had an option to buy it for $8.5 million. Hey, maybe she would just pay the 25 million to be a, a good sport. I don't know. And they said in documents that at stake in an office building, 40 Wall Street was worth $525 million to $602 million, between two to three times the estimate reached by appraisers working for the lender Capital One. So many, many examples of this, and I'm sure much more where that came from. I believe joining us now to discuss the one, the only, JR Jackson. JR, how's it going? There I am. There, I am. there you are, JR. How's it going? It's, it's not going well. I have to, oh, there's. <laughs> Sorry, we can't bring on JR without the Big News Wednesday. It is now officially a Big News Wednesday. JR, how's it going? Uh, big news on this Wednesday. Um, everything sucks. <laughs> Wait, are you implying that during the pandemic, the ability to connect to video chat stuff is difficult and sometimes frustrating? 
Sometimes impossible, actually. This is really weird how it works, you know. And considering I, someone could have taken advantage of the fact that we've been in this pandemic for a, a couple of years now and come up with some way that people can communicate. It's really weird. Yeah. No, the, the cool thing about Skype in particular, which we use, is that it has not gotten better during the pandemic or in the 15 to 20 years preceding it. <laughs> it's exactly the same and just as bad. Anyway, yes, uh, Jer, yes, I don't know how much you heard of that block, but um, the New York's uh, the New York Attorney General's office is saying that they've uh, sometimes inflated, oh, sometimes undervalued the property of their real estate to benefit financially, and that that sort of fraud is now going to be uh, a focus of their investigation. What do you think? Well, what are your expectations is, or hopes? Yeah, this is where um, well, my expectations are going to remain the same. Um, but, uh, we'll see. Like I still have hope, the hope is still there because at least they're continuing to pursue this. It's one of those things where now it's been this long, Trump's been out of office for this year now. And um, you would think maybe some of these would fizzle out. Um, maybe they'd have been uh, uh, you know, pushed off by someone else. All these things could have happened, but they're still on it. In fact, progressing, we're finding out where they're narrowing the, the investigation down to. We see the specific things that they're looking at. This is great, right? But there's always something still left down uh, down the process at some point. Where maybe Monkey yeah. Rich gets thrown in, maybe he's got some kind of turns that'll pull some kind of trick, or maybe they're gonna try and run out the clock with delays. We know the process. We'll just see. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we we know, you know, how they try to upset this stuff. I mean, he uh, he sued uh, the AG last month. So again, they, they they make it personal against the person. There's the media war against them. He's going to have the entire right wing media infrastructure uh, discrediting these investigations. I mean, like these specific claims. Look, I suppose the AG could literally just be making them up, but they it seems difficult to imagine that. Despite that, yesterday James's office said it had not decided whether the evidence outlined in the court papers merited legal action. Well. <laughs> if you steal cigarillos, <laughs> like you, there merits legal action. Exactly. They're overinflating their estimates by hundreds of millions of dollars. Do I get to do that? Nope. My house seems humble when you uh, drive by it on the street. Did you know it's worth thirty billion dollars? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently no, because I'm a plebe, I don't get to do that. But if you're rich and powerful, you get to do that. 100%. Bro. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. So again, like you mentioned, cigarette, you, you can't leave a, a convenience store and, and walk out with a Snickers without them saying, oh my God, you're breaking the law. We need to have crime deterrent, make sure people don't do this ever again. What's the crime deterrent here, whether or not we're going to let people continue to do this? Exactly. Yeah. Because again, the people who are investigating them, the ones who back them, the in charge, like, they may disagree over abortion or whatever, but they're the same group at the end of the day. Ugh. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.